Hello out there, this is Pamela Fagan Hutchins, and you have found me on Wine, Women, and Writing. This is the show, podcast, videocast, um, if there was another cast, I'm sure we'd do it, that goes out to 156 countries and showcases female writers and their great female characters. Occasionally, I will delve into the other gender, but we call that mezcal men and mystery. So today we're here for a wine, women and writing. I am excited to have you here. I want to make sure that everybody knows that if you want to see past episodes or you want to find out any more information about the show, my books or read ahead, see the shows that are coming up and read the books before I talk to the authors. You can find that at PamelaFaganHutchins.com, where you can also find my newest release which is Snaggletooth. And I've got this limited edition box set out right now with six books in it. You better snap that up fast because I'm only going to let it run for six months. Um, and then we've got Stag Party coming September 1st. Pre-orders are up for Sitting Duck and for Seeking Felicity. That's from two different series. Last thing I have to say before we get to the fun part, this is a solely owned and copyrighted production of Authors on the Air Global Radio Network. All hail Pam Stack, our producer. She is pretty awesome. Speaking of awesome, though, today I have a guest whose name I'm going to pronounce correct, correctly, even though I can't say correctly correctly, Mary Kalikua. I knew I would do it, Mary. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Pamela. I, we even practiced ahead of time, but it's still, I'm insufficiently caffeinated for, um, for doing anything that I have to enunciate. So I am based out in Wyoming and Mary is even further west. You're coming to us from where, Mary? I'm from Vancouver, Washington, which is right across the border from Portland, Oregon. So I'm close to Oregon. Nice. That's probably, uh, is it beautiful right now? Is this a great weather season for you? It'd been hot. Yes. Well, we, we're blessed with, you know, nice warm days, you know, like I think today will be 90, which is a little hot, but it'll cool down to 60 for the day, for the night. So it's perfect. It chases the heat away. That's how we are here. It's just, you wake up and you're like, oh, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it's not hot if I can sleep at night. <laughs> now you write a series that's also based very close to where you live, right? Your, your series is based where? Portland, Oregon. Portland. And tell us a little bit about the series before we dive into just the particular book that I read for the show. Yeah. So it features P.I. Kelly Pruitt, and she is a single mom to a deaf daughter, and she has inherited her father's detective agency. She grew up in the agency, but he protected her a lot. Um, and so the series really follows Kelly and her you know, striving to be a her own detective and to be a good mom and to solve the cases and and step out on her own. So that's the premise of the whole series. And I'll tell you guys, it was a lot of fun. You'll hear me talk about this more um, as we go through the interview. But before we dive into the book, I wanted to get Kelly to talk about if I mean, not sorry, I'm gonna talk, call you by uh, <laughs> Kelly Pruitt now, Mary, to talk about some of the accolades for this series, if it doesn't embarrass her too much, because she's just really, you've hit it out of the park on just a series. It's only two books long. Yes. Yeah. So my first book was out last year, Derailed, and it has been nominated for a Lefty, an Agatha Award, an Anthony Award, and it's a Seamus finalist for Best First PI Novel. So um, it's been very humbling. It, like, who would know? You know, who knew? And, you know, I could dream about those things, but who knew it was going to happen? So um, I've been very excited that it's been nominated. Well, congratulations on how successful it's been. It's very mm -hmm. deserved. And I hope that it continues to rack up the accolades for you. The, the, um, entry of this series into your life, what caused you to suddenly become the writer of the Kelly Pruitt series? And I say suddenly, for most authors, it's really not as sudden as it feels to the rest of the world. <laughs> well, you know, so I started writing when I was 27 and I'll be 56 on Monday. So, you know, I've been writing for a little while. Um, but I wrote the Kelly Pruitt series actually when I was 35. And she was the last book. I, I was a Sue Grafton fan, which is why I wanted to write um, PI novel in the first place. And I was going through a part of my life where I was, you know, a uh, stepmother. I was, you know, learning to be a stepmother with two daughters, and I was trying to start my own career. I, I was starting my own company. 
Um, and so she was really, we aligned a little bit, Kelly and I, because Kelly's yeah. trying to step out on her own. She's in her thirties. Um, so that was what started that whole thing. Now I came back to the book, obviously 15, 16 years later to edit it and get it to where it is today and be derailed. That's out on the market. But I wrote that book, you know, 16, well, actually almost 20 years ago now when I was 35. So I'm so glad I asked this question because as I was reading it and having compared it to your bio, I was wondering, it did not feel like very much of it was currently um, derived from your life other than location. But right. as I looked and saw that so your background is, I think, a legal secretary at one mm -hmm. point. So yeah. you have a, a strong interest in the legal field. You mentioned Sue Grafton. And now to hear the age at which you wrote it, it's starting to feel a lot like more like most of the authors of mystery series that I talk to. You'll find something that came straight from their heart and their experiences about their books. And I, I think we may have honed in on it right here in the first five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a Sue Grafton fan too. And you, you know, actually I'm a Sue Grafton fan, but I was an even bigger Marsha Mueller fan. I don't know if you read her books. They are actually set in Northern California and she's got a new one coming out and I've got her on the show next week. And I'm like freaking out with excitement because she's of that Sue genre, Sue Grafton um, uh, genre, um, you know, the V.I. Borshawski novels, all of those great female P.I. novels that were out in the 80s, 90s, you know, um, Marsha Mueller's in that club. So I had to throw that in in case you were a fan. I'm super excited. I, I have not. I will find her, though, as soon as we're done. <laughs> yeah, and um, start with, uh, I think it's called Edward, Edward of the Iron Shoes or something like that, or Pennies Over a Dead Man's Eyes. There's some really great titles. Anyway, Marsha Mueller, okay. Sharon McCone Mysteries. And that's next week's show. So now we're going to talk about the Kelly Pruitt Mysteries. <laughs> <laughs> so um, one of the things that I loved about Kelly in Denied, which is the second book, yes. and was how... I came to know Mary was um, was because of the re release of her second book was that Kelly is the owner of a crack assistant that goes everywhere with her on her cases. And we were talking about this crack assistant earlier. You want to tell us about her sidekick? Yes. Well, that would be Floyd. Floyd is her basset hound. And he, in book one, he hangs out with her a lot. In book two, he actually has a little bit of a part to play. So, um, so I made him work a little bit more than his normal <laughs> hanging out on the passenger side seat, you know. But I'm a dog lover. I'm actually, what, what I do for a living um, is I'm in the pet industry. So, you know, I get to be around dogs. And so it was just normal and natural to have a dog in with Kelly. Almost impossible not to. Exactly. <laughs> well, I did read a little bit about that. Some of that pet, pet industry, industry stuff. Boy, am I having trouble today. <laughs> pet industry stuff. When I was stalking Mary, which is what I do before these shows, I go around and look and see, is there anything I can find that's not in their bios out there? And so I kind of fell a little bit in love with her. She had me that works in pet industry. Yes. <laughs> um, and another thing that I loved about the books, because I'm always looking for depth of character, you know, what's going on that carries a reader from story to story with um, with your lead, with your female lead and her complicated relationship with her deceased father was wonderful. Um, so how was that always a part of the books from when you first wrote them? Um, this this love, hate, um, <laughs> hero worship, want to kill you, you know, kind of thing going on. Isn't that kind of normal in, in just life? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it's very complicated. Um, yeah, it is. It's right from the very beginning. You know, she, she inherits her dad's agency right from the book one, right? And she immediately finds out that she doesn't know him on a lot of levels. And I think that was real um, biographical for me because my dad was older. And so I didn't really know him on the level that I think parents know their kids these days. You know, I had yeah. a gen generation right. of parent. Um, and so there was not that connection. And that's the impetus of the whole of the whole series as well. Just that relationship of find out who, who he was and right. really finding out the secrets that he kept in order to protect her but they didn't really protect her in the end. And so kind of the theme is that what sometimes what we think we're doing to protect and love isn't always so much. It's it's setting people up to fail or, 
be in danger because we didn't tell them quite enough. <laughs> you we need to trust them, especially trust our grown children to grow up and yeah. be trustworthy. Um, I think that to me, it's it's a fun and interesting thing that she's discovering herself as she discovers her dad. The yeah. similarities and the differences and the nuances of what you thought was bad isn't so bad. Maybe that yeah. sometimes moral ambiguity is a place we all have to live in and do our best. And there's just a for me that made Kelly really interesting. I think that was what I loved most about her in the book. So if you guys uh, are into um, uh, discovering the depths of parents and relationships, et cetera, that part will really appeal to you in these books. Um, with with her dad having died young, do you did you lose a parent young too, or yeah, uh, I died at twenty when I was twenty seven. Okay, yeah. so so you really can relate to. Yeah. It felt very real to me without pushing you into something sad and and making yeah. us <laughs> cry. <laughs> yeah, but it felt very real. Um, yeah, and so you know. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and just it's just that I think she's just striving to make him proud and right, and that's just her thing. That's just going to be. That's what Kelly's trying for. But, you know, book two, Denied, really brought that home, too, because the theme or the plot of that book is she's trying to find a missing father. Right. And so that was the reason I wrote that as the plot was really to push Kelly further into her own stuff with her father. And and the the fa a father that throughout the book, you're struggling to determine whether or not he's worth the effort, right? <laughs> what worth Kelly's effort, whether it's going to break the heart of the um, person that's hired her, you know, et cetera. And so it's a, it's a very good mystery. It's a great whodunit, but you kept that so alive and so integral. Um, and, and that's what keeps me reading, you know, is a character that I'm really interested in. So thank you for doing that. <laughs> you. And, you know, every author is like, you know, everybody was like, oh, I'm so glad you liked liked Kelly, you know, and could connect with her. That's just like, that's the end all, right? Exactly. And, yeah. you know, when you write series mysteries, it, it really is the, it's the end all because if someone doesn't um, fall in love with your character, they're not going to keep going in the series. And I think you guys out there, you know, my audience, hello, everybody, are people that primarily read mystery, suspense, thriller, that enjoy female writers, female protagonists. And um, I flatter myself to say, take my recommendations. So anyway, I, I think you guys will really like Kelly. Um, I also think that I, I tend to, I'm speaking to you guys, I tend to have an audience that doesn't like gratuitous sex and cursing, and you're going to be just fine with the Kelly Pruitt books. She's a modern woman. She's not hiding in a monastery, but she's not um, she, she's not pole dancing in your face. Like, you know? <laughs> I come from a very conservative family, you know, and I don't really, I, I don't know. So, there's a place for it in books, but you know, this is a mystery and yeah. we're solving a crime and we don't have time for all that stuff sometimes. <laughs> that's right. There's a romantic element and yeah. you know that they're all adults, but that's yeah. not what we focus on. So <laughs> When I when I um, had living grandmothers, I would always give my books to them first, and uh, that I was consciously thinking, "Do I include anything in there that's going to get me in trouble?" And I've discovered as an author that a lot of readers, people that really have time to read, are not the people that are younger and enmeshed in pop culture and are real comfortable with all of that necessarily, right. because those people don't have time to read. They're in a different part of their lives. So anyway, um, I have to throw that in because I've gotten in trouble before when I've recommended books and it was like F-bomb, F-bomb, yeah. F-bomb. Well, my mom is 95. And so if my mom can read it just by, she's fine with it. And I keep that in mind. My mother is going to read this book. And my mother's not calling exactly. me up and mad at me. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so with, with this book, there's... Um, as I said, there's there's um, romantic elements to it, but there's also a strong parental element that she's got this daughter who is the light of her life and shares custody with dad. Um, and so she's constantly struggling. Am I a good enough mother as well? Which I think we all go through mm -hmm. no matter whether we're single or married or have one kid or 10, or if our kid is a dog, we all go through <laughs> that struggle so that was very relatable to me yeah. as well yeah she and she wants to be a strong role model i think that's 
that's the every cha everything challenge for a woman, right? Is that you, mm -hmm. you don't want to check your dreams and desires at the door just because you have a child. And yet you want to give that child everything they need, right? So it's a balance, right? So that you're living your best life and their best life is coming together. And it's a real struggle for Kelly because she did not grow up with the best, you know, her mother dies at 14 and her dad raised her. So it's not like it was a lot of nurture, nurture, nurture. <laughs> you know, she's like on her own and that's her role model, you know, so. Right. And she, struggle. she's getting some pressure from other people in her child's life that possibly her profession isn't the one she should have chosen as a mother. So it's very complicated for her as a woman who's trying, like you said, to be uh, a role model and at the same time have that wonderful relationship and not just quality time, but quantity time, you know, the, all these different things that come into play from women. And, you know, am I doing this? Am I doing that? Am I enough of this? Am I enough of that? She's really, she's right in the thick of it. Um, I know that for me as, as a mom, that was always, that balance was always extremely challenging. Um, I was at the time a uh, working corporate job as a lawyer and it was constant um, beating yourself up, you know, that you, you, and we need to be nicer to ourselves. So I, I, in the book, I found myself thinking to Kelly, I wish some people would just cut her some slack. She's doing a great job. Especially, especially that ex-mother-in-law of hers. <laughs> no, I, I try really hard not to do spoilers. Ex-mother-in-law, even her ex-husband to a certain extent, but really that ex-mother-in-law who's, who also in the book, there's a nice relationship unfolding, um, you know, there as well, a, uh, you know, a, a good and bad side to, um, to everybody. So well, there's, yeah, there's not just one side to anybody, right? Exactly. And lots of great depth of character. So now with respect to Kelly, we have derailed. And mm -hmm. by the way, if you are watching this via video, you can see beautiful covers of her books in the background. Your covers are lovely. Um, mm -hmm. We have derailed and denied behind, Kelly, uh, behind uh, Mary's head, Kalikoa. Kalikawa. <laughs> it just came to me that I had to try again. Kalikawa. <laughs> um, I'm so bad. Um, I'm not good at pronunciation. Anywho, what's next for Kelly? Deceived is actually what's coming up for her. That has the, will be the third book in the series. It'll be out next May, 2022. Um, Kelly will be going undercover in a women's shelter. And so it's a, it's a little bit different. She's feeling a little more secure as a PI. She's, uh, you know, taking a little more help perhaps than she's had before. Um, next door might be an unexpected guest who has moved in. It's it's going to be a lot of fun. It's it's I, I enjoyed writing it. It was the hardest book of the series to write um, because there's so many working parts. But I think people are going to enjoy Kelly in this one. I love that you have her undercover in a situation where she can explore women that in a shelter, I'm assuming that we have issues of women and children having run and been abused and facing all kinds of terrible, tough stuff. Instead of most of the books you read, the woman that goes undercover and she's suddenly wearing two threads of clothing over her body and they're both spandex and she's walking the streets, which is also very real women's issues and very real and difficult, but this is a whole different um, immersion of putting on a new identity. And I like this one. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that one already. Yeah. It, it, do you see yourself writing outside this series or for right now, does Kelly have all your love? Well, actually, um, no, I, I do see myself. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. So next year in September, 2022, I actually um, sold a two book series to Level Best Books, and it will be featuring a Portland homicide detective turned small town sheriff um, in Misty Pines, which is a coastal town, which is where I grew up. I grew up at the Oregon coast and um, he is um, remnants of an old case show themselves when a 14 year old missing girl um, is appears to be a, have been abducted or run away. We don't know yet. Um, and so it's, it's going to be a different picture because I have a male lead um, coming in. 
Okay, so girl, we need to talk. So I've been writing all female protagonist mysteries for years. And then about two years ago, I started writing a male protagonist mystery. And it was a really a lot of fun. <laughs> and yeah. I, I love that. I love you, um, you know, testing your chops and doing something um, completely different point of view wise at the same time as it'll be fun because you'll keep your mystery readers. So is this a, a fictional small town? It is. Well, so I grew up in Oregon coast, like Cannon Beach, Seaside, or, you know, that area. So, but I wanted creative license. So Miss Times <laughs> is a compilation of several towns right along that Oregon coast. Um, but when I was a kid, you know, before the Corps of Engineers took over, I could run around in the batteries and, you know, like all the things that would give you tetanus now. <laughs> <laughs> running all around those things. And so they're kind of backdrops and it's such, the Oregon coast is such a, you know, atmospheric place. And yeah. so it's a great place for a mystery. So. Oh, and Misty Pines. What mm -hmm. a great name, you know? Okay. It's bringing to mind. There was a show, um, a, a thriller suspense show. Oh, it was really freaky, weird. It may not have been set in Oregon, but had the most atmospheric name back in the 90s. I'm going to think of it and email you because it's immediately that feel yeah. of that name has brought that back to me. So um, everyone out there is going, what the heck are you talking about? <laughs> I really have no idea. I have no idea. What I'm talking about. It, um, it's a fun series, though. It's a, it's a fun book series. And it's the first book really deals with codependence, which is um, of a character. So it's got it's got a lot of Got it. Got a lot of depth to it. So I'm excited for it. So, yeah, I am, too. Now you've really got me intrigued because I'm I mean, I'm a Kelly fan. I love Kelly, but um, atmospheric um, coastal small town mystery. You're really starting to sing my song now of <laughs> what I want to read. So hurry, hurry. <laughs> well, you guys, I hope that you've been intrigued by Mary. Cole. Oh, gee, many Christmas. Mary, here I go. <laughs> Kelly Ekoa. Ah! I mean, I looked at it and I'm like, I'm completely blank. Kelly Ekoa. Kelly yes. Ekoa. But you know what? I just realized Kelly Pruitt, Kelly Ekoa, that your last name. Ah, oh, very cool. Um, so um, anyway, I hope you're really much better at saying her name than I am on camera and under pressure. And that you'll go check out Derailed and Denied or Kelly Pruitt books. Deceived is coming out next May. Deceived? Well, I guess I got that right. At least I got one thing right. And then her new series next fall. So. Yeah. Very cool. And um, for those of you that want to get out there and read the um, book for the upcoming show next week, I have Marsha Mueller coming on her new book, Fire and Ice. You can also get my books from my website, which is PamelaFaganHutchins.com in any format you want. So just knock yourself out. And I will expect to see you here next week when we talk to Marsha. And it will be um, easier for me because I know how to say her last name. But I still loved talking to Mary. And Mary, thank you so much for being here and putting up with my inability. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. This has been fun. Thank you. It was fun. And you guys see you next week. <laughs> Aloha.